Hello and welcome. You're watching Hotlink Supervisor for VMware vCenter. My name is David Davis and I'm a vExpert and a video training author from Trainsignal.com. I'm excited to talk to you today about what Hotlink Supervisor can do to help you to create a multi-hypervisor virtual infrastructure. According to the Gartner Group, most enterprises today have virtualized more than 50% of their physical servers and most of those enterprises have done so using VMware vSphere. For enterprises that are already using VMware vSphere and vCenter, they can utilize the Hotlink Supervisor virtual appliance to connect their vCenter server to other hypervisors including Microsoft Hyper-V, Citrix Zen server, and KVM. Once connected, the hosts and virtual machines from the other hypervisors will be treated just like VMware vSphere hosts and virtual machines and they'll be managed in the same VMware vSphere client and with VMware vCenter server. With the Hotlink Supervisor plugin to vCenter, VMware administrators will gain that single point of administration, deployment, and management for multiple hypervisors in the data center. Because the hosts and virtual machines from the other hypervisors will appear just as vSphere hosts and virtual machines, they'll achieve fine-grained host and virtual machine management, monitoring, networking, and security just as they do with their existing vSphere infrastructure. They'll be able to achieve seamless cross-platform cloning and migration from one hypervisor to another. Additionally, they'll be able to create, utilize, and manage heterogeneous snapshots across the multiple hypervisors, utilize their existing vSphere templates across the multiple platforms, integrate and automate their workload conversions, and even live migrate virtual machines within homogeneous clusters. All of this is possible thanks to the Hotlink Supervisor Transformation Engine. This is inside a virtual appliance that you easily deploy in your existing vSphere virtual infrastructure that will offer you a vSphere client plugin and then the ability to add multiple hypervisors to the existing vSphere hosts and clusters inventory tree. Before I step you through the deployment process of Hotlink Supervisor in a vSphere lab, let me briefly cover what the new free version of the Hotlink Supervisor can offer you. To help make getting started with multi-hypervisor management easier than ever before, Hotlink now offers a fully featured free version of the Hotlink Supervisor. With the free version, you can manage one additional hypervisor on top of your existing vSphere virtual infrastructure. That hypervisor could be Hyper-V, Zen Server, or KVM. You'll have a maximum of three host servers and up to 15 powered on virtual machines managed by the Hotlink Supervisor. There's free forum based support available for this free edition. For more information on commercial editions and support options available as an upgrade, contact sales at hotlink.com. So with that, let's get started with the deployment of Hotlink Supervisor by going over to my vSphere virtual infrastructure where I'll step you through the process. I'm using the VMware vSphere client which I've connected to my VMware vCenter server. I've already downloaded the Hotlink Virtual Appliance from Hotlink.com to deploy the Hotlink Supervisor. To get started, I'll go up here to File and down to Deploy OVF Template. I've already entered the path to the Hotlink OVA Virtual Appliance that I've downloaded. I'll click Next here. It finds the Hotlink Supervisor Virtual Appliance. I'll click Next. Accept the End User License Agreement. And in this case, I'll take the default name for the Hotlink Virtual Appliance and place it in my VMware vSphere inventory location. While we do have a number of different resource pools to choose from, in this case I'll just place it on my VMware vSphere ESXi host and click Next. I'll take the default virtual disk format and then we're prompted for the networking properties for the virtual appliance. If you're deploying the virtual appliance into a production environment, of course you would want to enter static IP addressing information here. In this case, I'm deploying the free Hotlink Supervisor into a lab environment, so I'll use the default DHCP IP addressing by leaving the network properties blank. I'll click Next here to continue. Finally, we get to review what we're about to do. I'll check to power on the virtual appliance after deployment and click Finish. As you can see, deploying the Hotlink Supervisor virtual appliance typically takes less than three minutes. With our deployment completed successfully, I'll click Close here, and then let's go take a look at the new Hotlink Supervisor Virtual Appliance. If we open up the console for the virtual machine, you can see here that we'll accept the end user license agreement, and we see the text-based console. 
this tells us the IP address that the virtual appliance has received via DHCP. It also tells us two different ways to administer the Hotlink Supervisor virtual appliance. You can manage the Hotlink virtual machine by going to the IP address colon 5480 to administer the virtual appliance operating system including setting the time zone, the network settings, and restarting or shutting down the virtual appliance. Or you can go directly to the IP address of the Hotlink Supervisor virtual appliance to enter your license key or register the vSphere client Hotlink plugin. Why don't we go ahead and do that? Here on the Hotlink Supervisor web based console, first I'll need to install my Hotlink license by pasting the key that I received via email from Hotlink.com. I'll click to update the license. With the Hotlink license applied, the next thing we need to do is to register the vSphere client plugin. I'll click here to register the plugin. And then I'll enter my vCenter server IP address or host name and credentials. And then click register plugin. With the vSphere client plugin successfully registered, the last thing I need to do for the installation is to restart the Hotlink management service. It's here on the web based management portal for the Hotlink virtual appliance that I'll log in using the username admin and the password Hotlink. That's a capital H and capital L. Inside this management portal, I can simply reboot or shut down the virtual appliance. I can also configure the time zone or the IP network properties for the virtual machine. After the reboot, we'll go back to the vSphere client where I need to make a change to the vCenter server settings. To do that, I'll go to administration and down to vCenter server settings. From here, I'll click on the SSL settings. And then I need to uncheck the checkbox here that says vCenter requires a verified host SSL certificate. I'll uncheck that and say OK. At this point, inside the vSphere client on most objects, including hosts and virtual machines, you'll see a new tab that says Hotlink. On the Hotlink tab, you'll be able to add new hosts and clone virtual machines. To add a new host, let's go up here to the Hyper-V cluster that I've created. And then let's go over to the Hotlink tab. It's here that we can add a new Hyper-V host for management by vCenter thanks to the Hotlink supervisor. To add a Hyper-V host, simply enter the IP address or host name. In the case of Hyper-V hosts only, you'll need to add a small Hotlink agent on each host. To do that, let's go over to the console of this Hyper-V host. It's here that I'll run the installation for the Hotlink Supervisor agent that I downloaded from Hotlink.com. Again, this is only for Windows Hyper-V hosts. I'll just accept the license agreement and click Install. With the agent installed, I'll click Finish. And if we go into Hyper-V Manager, you'll see that on this Hyper-V host, we've got a number of different virtual machines with one virtual machine powered on and running. It's a Windows 2003 virtual machine with about 4 gigs of RAM. Let's make sure we see all these virtual machines once we've added them for management over in the vSphere client, thanks to the Hotlink Supervisor. Back here in my vSphere client, because this is a Hyper-V host and the agent has been pre-installed, I'll check that checkbox and click Add Host. While the Hyper-V host is being added, we can go up here to the Citrix Zen Server Virtual Data Center, to the Zen Server Cluster, go to the Hotlink tab, and then enter the IP address or host name for our Zen Server host. Because this isn't a Hyper-V host, the Hotlink Supervisor will push the agent down to the Citrix Zen Server host automatically. I'll just click Add Host. And while the Zen Server host is being added, let's go over here and check out the new Microsoft Hyper-V host that's now being managed by vCenter thanks to the Hotlink Supervisor. Notice when I click on the Hyper-V host, I get full information about the server, resources, the amount of CPU and memory usage that's available, and even information about the local C drive used for local storage on the host. I can go into the virtual machine inventory for the host, see all the virtual machines that are running in Hyper-V, and manage these virtual machines just as I would any other virtual machine running underneath my VMware vSphere hypervisor. I can even right click on a virtual machine, perform power on or off operations, access the server console, or take snapshots of the virtual machine. With the snapshot in progress, let's go check the status of the Citrix Zen server that we added to be managed by VMware vCenter thanks to the Hotlink supervisor. If I click on the Citrix Zen server host, again I get local storage information, virtual machine information, configuration information about the host, tasks and events that have happened on the host recently. I can configure alarms, permissions, use the VMware vSphere mapping functionality. Thanks to the Hotlink supervisor, 
other hypervisors are managed just as VMware vSphere hosts and virtual machines are managed. Not only can you view hosts and virtual machines from other hypervisors inside VMware vSphere, you'll also find that reporting, scripting, and most third-party applications that are compatible with VMware vCenter will also be able to see and manage the virtual machines that are running on other hypervisors now managed by VMware vCenter. I'm excited about the new free version of the Hotlink Supervisor available from Hotlink.com. I've already been using the Hotlink Supervisor in my lab to manage multiple hypervisors, and it's been amazing what all it can do. To download the new free version of the Hotlink Supervisor, visit Hotlink.com. Again, this is David Davis, video training author from Trainsignal.com. Thanks for watching this video covering the new free Hotlink Supervisor for VMware vCenter.